Hello, this is Emrys, and welcome to Girls with Sabres. One popular interpretation of the Raylo connection is that they personify the elements of Yin and Yang, Ray being the light, Kylo being the dark. Another interpretation is that they will come together and reinstate the Grey Jedi. In this video, we seek to unite these theories together, suggesting that the union of Yin and Yang is the Grey Will of the Force. Hello everyone, my name is Lady Delphinium and I'm going to be discussing the deeper meanings of the yin-yang. The symbol is a Taoist symbol representing duality, but I'm going to be discussing it from a Mahayana point of view where it will represent non-duality, that everything exists as an absolute and a relative simultaneously. The meaning of yin-yang symbolism goes much deeper than the popularized Western understanding. Yin Yang exists in the micro and the macro levels and represents the ever-present balance of energies in our universe, existing from the anatomy of a single atom on a micro scale and extending to the cosmic forces like gravity and dark energy on a macro scale. When you look at the symbol, uh, the circle will represent the whole, the black will be yin, representing the feminine, the dark, um, etc. And the white is yang, representing the masculine, the light, etc. They are complementary forces and are attracted to each other, always in search of each other to balance themselves, the micro, and the whole, the macro. Before we move forward, we should expand on what I mean by absolute and relative. When I say these words, I'm actually attempting to greatly simplify the doctrine of two truths, conventional truth and ultimate truth. Conventional truth is how we observe the world. Through the lens of human perception, we interpret the world as separate and independent things and beings. Ultimate truth exists regardless of our observation or our interpretation. Through a universal lens, there is no such thing as separation or independent things or beings. This should not lead us to the nihilistic conclusion that nothing exists. It is actually quite the opposite. Everything that is, was, or will be is existing simultaneously, and we are all so interconnected that our intrinsic unity makes us one. When we consider the micro and macro effects of the yin and yang eternally seeking each other, existing within and without themselves, into the infinite, what are we left with? It's not actually two entities after all. Not really. This symbiotic harmony achieved in repetition within and without itself causes yin and yang's differences to blur. Each whole has equal parts black and white, eagerly repeating over and over again. Each yin is really a yin-yang, and each yang is really a yin-yang. So neither is really black or white. And what happens when we mix equal parts black and white? We go gray. We achieve balance for the individual and balance for the universe. Kylo Ren and Rey, the Yin Yang personified, dark side of the force with the light, the feminine and the masculine, polar opposites that are magnetically drawn to the other, but also have specks of the other in their makeup. Snoke bridged their minds, but I believe the cosmic will of the Force draws them towards each other to accomplish its will. The Force theme gently and sweetly plays as Rey and Kylo touch fingertips. And when Kylo kills Snoke and arms Rey with his family's legacy lightsaber, the Force theme triumphantly plays and they work together in unity to defeat the Praetorian Guards. And the Force will continue to unite these two towards the other until the division dissolves into perfect unity. And just like Lady Delphium said, the equal parts of the yin-yang blur, dark and the light become one, it forms gray. In this case, the gray Jedi. First comes the day, then comes the night. After the darkness shines through the light, the difference, they say, is only made right by the resolving of gray through refined Jedi sight. Before we go on, we're not talking about the gray Jedi and how they function in the EU, which is no longer canon. They lived in complete moral ambiguity. We believe that gray has multiple connotations, opening the opportunity for Disney to redefine the gray Jedi. When I think gray, 
I think a symbolism of maturity and wisdom, as in going gray or what led you to go gray, the wisdom and experiences you have. Gray doesn't always mean moral ambiguity. Gray also means experience, sound judgment. Think of the father in the Mortis Arc. He desires that balance between both siblings, the light and the dark. He is the personification of the Force. For as he said in the Clone Wars, only the Chosen One can balance the light and the dark. So it makes perfect sense that the cosmic will of the Force still selects a Chosen One to balance the Force. Kylo Ren promised Vader's mask that he would finish what his grandfather started. Perhaps Ben Solo misunderstood his grandfather's quest due to Snoke's manipulation of Anakin's history or a grand illusion of Vader's spirit appearing to Kylo, all the ruse to bend Kylo to the dark side of the Force. So what was Anakin's vision? He offered co-rulership to both his wife and to his son, but offered under the influence of the dark. What if Ben Solo returns and makes the same offer again to Rey without his glove on, without manipulation? And he echoes the heart of Anakin's vision for the Jedi and the galaxy. I think Anakin's definition of compassion is key here. Compassion be defined by him in the prequels as unconditional love. Perhaps the Force wanted a union to govern that galaxy in balance using judgment and mercy, both components of the light and the dark. After all, compassion by its definition means with passion, the first tenet of the Sith Code. Perhaps the will of the Force wished for Anakin to teach the Jedi the importance of attachments and compassion towards people, not stoic pacifism of the Jedi or selfish ambition of the Sith, a meaning of the spectrum in perfect gray or mature understanding. There must be a reason that the legacy lightsaber called to Rey. What if Ben Solo and Rey are both the chosen ones, two being one in marriage? So the marriage of Ben and Rey fulfill the prophecy. This finishes up the Skywalker saga, but not necessarily the Skywalker line, for it is a marriage after all. So guys, if you really enjoyed what we had to say today, please give us a big thumbs up, like this video, comment below, subscribe to our channel, make sure to turn on notifications to all so you get all the new content we feel like dropping on any given day, really. <laughs>